guys, it's Will here, and I'm joined by Sam, and I'm also joined by this guy, who's been strangely <laughs> quiet tonight, but uh, yeah, he's uh, he has some opinions on the new edition. But anyway, um, what are we doing tonight, Sam? So this is our first 8th ed. Yes, this is going to be our first 8th ed bat rep. Now, the plan here is that we've played a game already of 7th ed a few days ago, using um, roughly the army lists that we're going to be using tonight. And the idea is to compare and contrast the 7th ed game and the 8th ed game with very similar armies to see how it works out and how it compares. Yeah, so it should be interesting. What you brought tonight? So, Tyranids are back. Oh. I like Tyranids, they've got a lot better in my opinion. They've got uh, a lot more of them, that's for sure. Yeah, they're, they're, you can definitely squeeze more into your points now. Mm -hmm. um, we'll see how they go on the tabletop, but the stats are looking better. Mm -hmm. So, And I've got my Orc Cult of Speed back, so if you want to see how they got on in the first game, I'll pop a link down in the description. You might. I might, I might remember. <laughs> if, if you ever catch me saying I'm going to pop a link in the description and I haven't, then... Uh, comment and tell him. Comment and tell me and I'll try and get around <laughs> to doing it at some point, but yeah. Um, but yeah, it should be exciting. A uh, lot of changes. Um, I've had to kind of rejig my army composition a bit to fit with the new uh, yeah, the new, Org. I mean, I like the new battalions and the new command mm. points and the way they can work, so it'll be interesting to see how they're going to impact the game. Yeah, definitely. Anyway, without further ado, let's go and take a look at the armies. So here's my 1750 point orc list. Um, one thing I found assembling this list was that all the vehicles got way more expensive so uh, I've had to trim out a lot but I've tried to keep it to have the same theme as uh, and the same sort of construction as before but uh, yeah there are less models now than I was running before. Keeping my warlord the same, war boss in mega armor, power claw, custom shooter, pretty standard. Um, and then I've had to add a big mech in because the new battalion, um, force, not battalion, uh, yeah, well the force organisation chart anyway, requires two HQs if you're running the bigger type of things. So uh, yeah, kept things simple, went for a big mech with a custom force field. And I've got a unit of knobs to go with them, five guys, two upgraded with power claws. They got so much cheaper and gained an extra wound, so I'm hoping that they're going to uh, have a nice impact. Given them a battle wagon, got the kill cannon on there this time, and the death roller, because the death roller finally got worth it. Um, so hopefully that is, uh, with the amount of points I've paid for that model, that's going to need to have an impact. Got uh, ten boys um, in a truck. Trucks got way, way, way more expensive and uh, got a, um, a knob in there with power claw. Two units of boys upgraded with shooters, no power claws on these knobs, and two trucks. There's uh, one wrecking ball I've added to the truck, but that's actually going to be the transport for these guys. The fighty guys are going to have the wrecking ball. Then I've got my tank busters, um, another unit that's had a slight points hike, but potentially very good unit. Um, and they've got another truck, big shooter on there. Two units of war bikes. I don't mind that I'm paying 10 points extra for these guys because they've got um, two wounds now and they're faster and they get more shots. So uh, yeah, should be good. Two mobs of five with knobs with power claws. And then the Dakajet. Six super shooters on there. That's right, six super shooters. And I still get my plus one BS to get BS, uh, well, hitting on four plus as long as I... Um, target them all at the same unit but I'm likely to be doing that anyway. So uh, army feels a little bit smaller than before but there's still some pretty cool options in here and so we'll just have to wait and see how it goes. And here are Sam's Tyranids. Unlike my Orcs who've had to downsize, the Tyranids have um, had to gain a lot more models to make it up. He has lost his Venom Thrups because he only owns two and the new edition requires units of three, so I imagine he'll probably be acquiring another one of those at some point, maybe. But for now, they're uh, left at home. Starting over here, 20 Termagants, or 30, 30 Termagants with Flesh Borers, and a Tervigon to back them up and spawn even more of them. Then we've got five Tyranid Warriors. He's switched these out for fighty ones with uh, dual bone swords and dual scything talons. So that's uh, potentially going to be very nasty in combat. Still got the two Carnifexes. And and what what is this? It, it looks like a Hive Tyrant, but it hasn't got wings. 
He's got a venom cannon and a bone sword. This doesn't have wings? What? Non-winged hive tyrants are now an option, apparently. And the Trigon, and in this game I will really try to call him a Trigon, because, yeah, I just could not remember his name last time. 30 Hormigaunts with Adrenal Glands. Um, the Trigon also has Adrenal Glands, by the way. And then Hive Guard with Shock Cannons. That's something you don't see every day. 3 Lictors. And then 20 Gene Stealers. From what Sam's been telling me, it sounds like Gene Stealers in a Tyranid, li Tyranid list are actually back. So, uh, yeah, there's a couple of things that I see all the time in Tyranid lists that this hasn't got. There's no flying monster. There's no Dak effects or Dak a tyrant. There's no venom thrips. This is uh, strange, but uh, we'll just have to see how this big horde goes. Um, just one caveat on this battle report. Um, we this is our first game, so chances are we're going to get something wrong. If we do, then please do tell us. You know, if we get something wrong, we want to learn. But don't, don't judge us too harshly. We're still learning. But uh, yeah, on to deployment and mission. Okay, so the mission we've rolled up tonight is Deadlock. So this is still very much the same as Old Style Deadlock with a reducing number of objectives every turn. Um, but we get to pick the deployment, specifically Sam got to pick the deployment. And we've gone for a new one called Frontline Assault, where um, you have a kind of a weird shaped deployment zone that's like six inches at the edge, but as far as 15 inches in, um, or nine inches from the center point in the middle. So uh, it produces kind of a, a funny shaped battle line. Um, other than that, it's pretty much the same, except uh, in Deadlock, in the later parts of the game, after turn three, it costs twice as many points to use stratagems. Um, incidentally, we both have six stratagem points in this army, or in these armies. Um, Sam finished deploying first because he had left both his Trigon and his Lictors in reserve, which uh, shrunk down the number of drops he had. So as you can see, his big stuff is generally clustered to the centre. We've got the Turvagon, Carnifex's Hive Tyrant there, with all his little gribblies spread out across the front. We've got the Hormigaunts, Gene Stealers, and Termagants, with the Hive Guard staying close to the Carnifex's, and the Tyranid Warriors a bit further back behind the trees. Put my big main hammer unit up the center, battle wagon with a death roller loaded with knobs and a mega boss and a big mech. Bikes, one unit on the flank, um, one unit more central. Three trucks um, over here. We've got the, um, the tank busters one and then shooter boys and slugger boys. Another unit of shooter boys over here, and then this is something you don't usually see in deployment. Um, the rules as I'm reading it is there's nothing special about flyers starting off the table, so my Dakajet is on right from the start. So it'll be interesting to see how that works. Um, he also can't leave the combat airspace and come back. If he goes off the board, he is off. So, uh, uh, But he's still only got the 90 degree turn and the 20 inch minimum move, so yeah, interesting to see how that's going to work out. Um, I'm worrying about particularly the um, the Trigon popping up and potentially being able to charge the turn it pops up. You'll need a 9, but it's doable, and I uh, don't actually know what the Lictors do for their special thing, but we shall see. Anyway, as Sam finished setting up first, he would normally get to go first, but sees the initiative hasn't gone away. Sorry about that, Sam. I know you wanted it too, so we're going to have a crack. No, nope, it's a 4. Initiative not stolen. Tyranid, turn one. Right, so just before we go into turn one, just want to point out a couple of little mistakes that we realised after the game that we made during army selection and deployment. And uh, yeah, um, thanks to Sam for pointing these out to me because uh, I wouldn't have realised otherwise. So the first thing is your Carnifexes. Um, they are taken as a unit but and deployed as a unit but then once they've deployed they act independently so um, that was uh, yeah may or may not have had an impact on the game obviously you could have still taken the unit could have still moved them around together but uh, yeah in theory you wouldn't have had to you could have split them up um, then the lictors uh, they should actually only be taken in units of one, not the unit of three that he had. But again, I don't know how much impact that would have had on the game because they um, 
were uh, they're obviously still legal to take three lictors and move them around together um, if you've got enough slots which I think he did have in that list um, and the final thing that may have made a difference is in the deployment um, see player who gets to go first is the player who de finishes deploying first and due to having two units that didn't deploy um, Sam didn't uh, Sam got deployed first but actually if those lictors and that trigon had taken up a drop which we now understand they should have done that would have actually had the orcs finishing deploying first and I'd have had turn one like I say everyone's got perfect 2020 hindsight I don't know if it would have affected the game but uh, anyway on to turn one so the Tyranids started their turn, surging forward, much as you would expect from a Tyranid army. The one unit that didn't really come forward was the old Tervigon, who stayed back. Um, interestingly, she didn't choose to spawn. I'm not sure if that's because Sam forgot or she can't. Okay, because you haven't got any reinforcement points. Yeah, okay. So Tervigon can't actually re spawn because he hasn't got reinforcement points. He's using her more as a, a psychic backup and uh, um, obviously and to uh, oh she can refill that unit I'm hearing so that's that's the idea there right um, rest of the army bundled forward mostly advancing it's not called running now it's advancing hive tyrant didn't because he wanted to take a shot and neither did the hive guard um, psychic phase he put feel no pain onto the gene stealers um, and that's called catalyst yep and the other one was the ho oh yeah he cast the horror on the bikes which meant they're at minus one to hit now and there's nothing I can do about that and minus one leadership I think I might be investing in a weird boy well I've got a weird boy I just need to actually include him in the army um, shooting was all targeted at the battle wagon the hive guard with their shot cannons are now really good against vehicles they put like five hull points on it and then he also, not hull points, sorry, wounds. And then the Hive Tyrant's Heavy Venom Cannon also took three wounds off as well. It does D3 damage, so uh, yeah. It's uh, interesting, the big mech's uh, five up in Van Save didn't really come into play there. Um, probably wasn't the best choice, but I needed another HQ. In hindsight, should have gone for a weird boy. I'm assuming he's still an HQ. Points wise, he had Secure Objective 3. Um, area Denial, which is a new one that basically requires him to not have any enemy units within six inches of the center point, which was obviously very easy for him because I hadn't moved yet. And then finally he had Harness the Warp. There were three other points he didn't score. Um, he's discarding Witch Hunter, um, keeping hold of one that requires him to hold Objective 4 for two consecutive turns. He's not even quite got there yet. And the final one was Blood and Guts. So uh, a cagey start, for the, well actually no, a pretty aggressive start for the Nids, but the only damage being to the battle wagon. Anyway, let's see what the Orcs can do in Orc turn 1. So started my turn feeling pretty optimistic. Um, moved the Dacker Jet up here to capture that objective there, which I needed to hold for two turns. The idea being to then bring the truck across next turn. Um, and decided, as the Gene Stealers and Hormagaunts were right in my face anyway, I might as well just go for it and try and take them out. My plan being, my knobs will hit first because um, we're going to get the charge, as will my bikes, and we can really thin out the numbers. The Battle Wagon's got his death roller. These guys had a bit of a tricky time because... Uh, I haven't had as much time to read the rules as Sam has and didn't realise that all these vehicles and bikes couldn't even move over the difficult terrain at all. We just had to move around it, which was a bit of a nuisance. They've kind of been delayed, but these guys were able to uh, whiz around here. So I'm moving forward into range, but grabbing that objective. Um, in the shooting phase, the bikes and this truck tried to take on the hive guard. I was rather... Uh, annoyed with them from last turn but unfortunately only did three wounds and they got four each oh, sorry only did two wounds and they got three each um, and the Dacker Jet um, plus this truck managed to strip off a couple of um, Tyranid warriors from that squad and the tank busters already lined up at the Hive Tyrant ten shots not a single hit not a single solitary hit uh, other than that, the units that were lining up the charge didn't really get to do much. Um, the shooting was a little bit underwhelming, to be honest. Uh, but that was bad rolls. I can't blame that on anything else. 
Um, then I got off two out of the, two of the charges, or three, four of the charges I wanted to do, but the big fail was the war boss. Um, so all orc units can re-roll their charges now if they have here we go, which the majority of the non-vehicle ones do. Um, but the war boss, despite the re-roll, still failed his charge. So the big mech and the knobs went in unsupported, and the bikes got it into the hormigaunts, and the battle wagon got in as well with its death roller. Um, so I think, oh, well, I'll go for the bikes first because that's a nice simple combat to start off with. It doesn't matter because I'm hitting first across the board anyway. Um, bikes didn't do too great, but I wasn't expecting too much back from the Hormigaunts because bikes are toughness 5 with two wounds. Um, so I killed a couple of Hormigaunts, they killed a bike. Um, the Hormigaunts didn't actually make that attack till the end of the turn. But then here, Sam pulled off a stratagem, the one that allows you to counter charge or counter attack um, and basically then went next so that's one to watch out for in future and uh, yeah Gene Steelers went first and pretty much munched the unit there was one knob left alive and the battle wagons got like four wounds left um, yeah and the big mech's completely dead as well um, the uh, nerf to the battle wagon also meant that the death roller didn't do a lot because I was now well below half wounds and the one knob did manage to kill a Gene Steeler but uh, yeah, that was uh, very well played on Sam's part and completely caught me blindsided on that. Uh, the one surviving knob then ran from morale and uh, yeah, so things ain't good. I did score two points that turn for secure objective six, but um, unfortunately that was it. Couldn't even manage to score a point for first blood despite all the potential shooting I had. Anyway, let's see if the Tyranids can have an equally bad turn in Tyranid turn two. So Sam started his turn by bringing on these Lictors 9 inches out from my truck and this Trigon Prime 9 inches out from this truck with the tank busters in. Um, everything else pretty much advanced forward. One of the main advances was these Tyranid Warriors trying to get close enough to charge that truck but they had a pretty uh, uh, slow turn and didn't quite get there. Um, in the Psychic phase his Hive Tyrant consistently is chucking out really good powers here so he managed to keep the five up invan catalyst on the gene stealers oh it was the turvagon that did that not the tyrant sorry my bad um and then they got um onslaught onto the um carnifexes and the horror onto the war bosses the carnifexes can run charge and the war boss was at minus one to hit um both of these units carried on pushing up the hive guard put seven hull points onto this truck um, with their shock cannons and the termagants had a pretty good turn of shooting actually killed two of the bikes um, it seems that having two wounds isn't really making these bikes much more survivable because I just keep fluffing my armor saves big old Turvigon put a single shooting attack hit Trigon, I've done it, I've, uh, yeah, got as far as turn two before I called him the wrong name. The Trigon Prime popped a single sh sh uh, wound onto this truck with shooting. Um, and everything else was, uh, yeah, pretty much all mooling around in the middle. Um, assault phase, that was where things got interesting. These guys tried to charge, failed to get in. This guy, however, did not fail to get in. He charged in and was originally going to do something like 11 wounds worth of damage to the truck. But I took the ramshackle table or the ramshackle roll and managed to get two sixes, meaning it was reduced from being 11 wounds to simply two wounds. So that really saved my butt there. That was uh, pretty darn lucky, if you ask me. Um, the rest of the charges, the Carnifex has got in on the war boss. Um, and the Gene Steelers were still engaged with the battle wagon. Um, Trigon swang, no, the Carnifex is swang first and did six wounds to the war boss, leaving him on just a single wound. And then to try and mimic Sam's move from last turn and give it a try, I used a stratagem point to let the bike swing next and killed some Hormigaunts. Wasn't quite sure what I was going to do with the stratagem point, so I just thought, you know what, let's give it a go. Killed six Hormigaunts before they were able to swing back to kill another one. The Trigon uh, I've already talked about, and then the War Boss, when he finally had his turn to swing, used another couple of stratagem points to re-roll a hit and re-roll a number of wounds dice, um, and that resulted in still only doing five wounds to the Carnifexes, uh, leaving one with two left, I believe. 
Oh, eight wounds, so three left. Okay, then. So that is not good, and the Gene Stealers easily finished off the Battle Wagon. So uh, not a great turn for me, but Sam didn't actually manage to score any points, thankfully. He was just focused on kill, 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 kill. <laughs> so hopefully that's going to give the Orcs the chance they need to strike back as we go into Orc turn two. So turn two and time to fight back with the Tyranids not having scored anything last turn. At least there was a hope I could score this on points. So move this truck to grab Objective Forge, one of those new ones um, where I needed to um, hold it for two turns and that scored me that nice and straightforward there. Dakajet swung round here and this truck used the rules to allow it to duck out of combat and then the boys inside disembarked ready to charge and these two squads here as well as the squad over there all disembarked as well. Shooting was largely ineffective although I did manage to put six wounds on the Trigon from the um, combined fire of the Tank Buster boys and the Dakajet. In combat um, most of it went down pretty much in the order you'd expect, except the Carnifexes were able to make an out of sequence attack to hit the war boss. I was actually expecting him to use that on the Trigon to hit the boys, but uh, even when he did swing, he only actually killed one of them. His uh, to hit rolls are greatly reduced by having taken six wounds. But yeah, the Carnifexes finished off the war boss despite him making two of his three saves. But uh, yeah, other than that, charges the. Um, Bikes went into the hive guard and killed one of them for no real damage in return. The boys went into the termagants, as did the truck, and that between them wiped out nine, uh, eleven. Um, and where they piled in, they just edged out of synapse range because turvagons now only have eight. You need a trigon, a tyrant for a twelve-inch synapse. So they had to take a bravery roll and another nine fled. So there's 20 models gone from that in that turn. So uh, yeah, if you can get leadership to work, it can be deadly. These guys failed the charge, but I did manage to get a swing with my truck's wrecking ball. <laughs> Cue Miley Cyrus wrecking ball music. <laughs> um, and then over here, these guys did pretty well actually, killed two of the Tyranid Warriors for only a single casualty in return, but as they're a synapse organism they're not going anywhere anytime soon. So I pulled out another couple of points that turn, which has actually given me a slim lead. Unfortunately I've not actually killed a whole Tyranid unit yet, so uh, things are still not, not really going well and I think I'm about to get crumped by those Carnifexes and that Hive Tyrant. But we shall see. Tyranid, turn three. Here we go. Correction on the scores there. He actually was holding Kingslayer and killed my war boss that turn, which we forgot to factor in, so he's actually significantly ahead on points. He got two for Kingslayer plus one for the war boss. So Tyranid turn three was really time for Sam to uh, pull the plug on the orcs existing anymore. Um, as you can see, there's very, very few orcs left on the table. Lictors came over here and charged into the orcs that were there. Uh, didn't actually wipe them out, but then leadership did that. Um, over here, the gene stealers, just so fast, and the ability to run charge, coming right up the centre, smashed through me tank busters. The Trigon didn't even need to swing. The tank busters were dead before he got a chance. Hive Tyrant finished off that bike mob. Carnifex has finished off the boys there, although I did manage to take one Carnifex down with me. My only slight win was in this combat where I killed five Termagants for only two casualties in return. But uh, yeah, as you can see, uh, things are just all falling apart for the Orcs. Um, Sam scored another bunch of points. If we quickly look at the scores, he's now on nine points to my five and I've got virtually nothing left to score any points with. So uh, yeah, uh, I'm going to call that a Tyranid win because it's getting late. So uh, good game mate, you absolutely mullered me. Right, so that was a bit of a mauling for the Orcs. I mean, I don't want to cast too much judgement on the Orc book because I had some bad rolls, the list wasn't optimal, I'm still learning. But one thing we can say is it looks like the Nids are back. Nids are full. Hungry, hungry, hungry. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, yeah, I definitely think Nids are getting better, although, like your standard tri um, Tervigan, he went up quite a bit of points, he's now mm. 250 points, and the Flyerant isn't as good anymore. 
Because um, from from what I've read, he can only have two devourers. Yeah. And devourer brandish one only fires three shots now. Okay, so he's so, toned down a bit. He's toned he... down. He's half. <laughs> he's half to strength, and he doesn't even get to reroll hit. So a flyer in with devourers is a little crap now. Mm. What about the the actual game itself? Because I mean, there's a lot that we're going to learn over the armies. But how do you how do you feel the actual new mechanics worked out for you? Yeah, um, they don't feel too different. Like Maelstrom's mm. still still the same. Yeah, we're still used to that, and. So the score and the points works nicely. Mm. I like the way the objectives work. Who holds an objective is yeah. the person with the most models on it. Mm-hmm. Um, well, you would. You play Tyranids. <laughs> yeah. I'm just happy to get my Tyranids out. You know, Tyranids play a heart and heart. Mm-hmm. Um, I've had to play a lot of Chaos lately. Um, <laughs> so I'm glad to have the, the uh, Tyranids back. I'm yeah. interested to see what Gene Steel are like. But mm-hmm. yeah, um, basic mechanics was. I don't feel, feel it's too different. No, there were just certain key things that I thought really caught me out. I think the way vehicles vehicles have changed the most dramatically of anything. Yeah. And I run a lot of vehicles. I run Cult of Speed. I run Mechanized Marines. I run Semi Mech Eldar. So a lot of stuff caught me out. Not being able to even move my vehicle over what I thought was a relatively low wall was like, yeah. oh, okay. Uh, the way terrain works is the one massive change I can mm. definitely say has happened. Um, but uh, I feel the game was was fun, apart from the completely getting mauled part of it. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I'm certainly looking forward to playing more. And those stratagems, if you used right, as we yeah. saw, can have a big influence. Yeah. On the so game. if you'd known about that stratagem, you would attack with the orc knobs first. Well, like I knew about it. I just didn't. It wasn't Twig in it. the forefront of my mind. I was yeah. thinking, right, I charge with the knobs. I hit the gene stealers because if not, the gene stealers are going to charge me and they're going to swing first. So mm. it's better to swing first and kill them all. I mean, that's the advantage. I mean, since the books have been out for pre order, the stores had a copy. And, and you've been down here practically every, every day, day reading it. Whereas so. I've had to be responsible and adulty. Yeah, well, <laughs> I don't have a life. So <laughs> that's why I paint so many models. <laughs> <laughs> whereas I have the, uh, the fun of a, a wife and kid. No, it's all good. It's all good. But uh, yeah, we're certainly going to be doing more bat reps. Um, thinking I possibly want to bring the Marines out and see how they're doing in the new edition because it's been a little while since I've got my salamanders on the table. Mm. But uh, I know people have asked to see the Dark Eldar in the new edition, and I think someone's requested an Orcs versus Chaos. I think or an Orcs versus yeah. Marines at some point. So uh, yeah, we will try and get around to all of these. There's so much to do. Um, and so mean, without the indexes in our hands as well, we have to use store copies. Yeah, so, so it's tricky, a bit. tricky to prep them for the next couple of weeks until it's actually out. Don't know exactly when you're seeing this. It might be after it's out, but from where we're standing, it's still a week or so out. But uh, yeah. yeah, anyway, thanks a lot for watching. Hope you guys found this interesting. And uh, yeah, we'll see you again soon for more 7th, more 8th Ed Bat Reps. <laughs> Bye. Bye.